Hi guys, okay, let's see. Let's see what's happening. Oh, hold on. Seven three two. Did I not change the name? I hope that is the same. Twelve turns. <laughs> Twelve turns. So. As the old adage goes, we may not have won the battle, but we've probably won the war. Um, this is probably going to be okay because... Like looking through all our units there, every single one of them has uh, the Blood of the Phoenix promotion, except the ships themselves. So we will lose the ships if they get attacked by these guys. Um, yeah, I was going to try and distract them with that one as well. Did I use my fireball? Yes. Okay. Well, let's end her and then see what she does. I mean, the good news is um, Oscar Bellar's capital has been destroyed. We destroyed another city here. You know, we didn't you know, destroy many units, really. Probably what, maybe a dozen, maybe a little bit more than a dozen. You know, I mean, more if we include magical units that just last a few turns and she summoned and attacked us and died, but I don't know, maybe 20, 30 units overall in the whole little war uh, ended in her capital, which is a big deal because that was, that was where she had, uh, her religion was founded there, so that was her cultural city where all her religious power was, probably meant she'd built, um, you know, various wonders in that that would have been useful and powerful to that are now destroyed in the game world. So we, I feel, you know, the original plan was just to kind of steamroll through and just take her out, basically, you know, destroy the cities as I went. Um, she ended up being too strong for that, and uh, and we had to do a retreat. But in our retreat, we gave her a good hiding, I think. She will be feeling that. She might not recover from it. Um, losing her capital and her cultural city and the wonders in it and everything. Um, but we've got to get home um, because we need a celebration. So our people are going to try and return home. You know, OK, Ferry Vicona uh, has decided that she wants a war with us. I feel fairly defensive. Like we, the, our tree end defense things can spawn in these woods here. Uh, yeah, he's off to build more southern forests. And we should check the state of our our workers actually. Forest, get in there. Build that lumber mill. I'm glad I didn't forget about that. Um, and what happened to our other workers? Where did they go? They were sort of around here. Oh, there they are. Okay, they're waiting on... I'm going to lose them there. I think I'm going to put them... Yeah, I'm going to put them there. Um, because they're sort of blending in with the city extension there. I mean, this... Um, this again, this came from, you know, the religion aspect of, of the, the Beyond the Sword expansion. 
all that was worked on <coughs> with a bunch of us modders when we were like um, trying to see what we could mod with the Call to Power 2 game. And one of the other things that actually, I can't remember the name of the mod himself, but there was a, like originally in like Civ 2, um, yeah, and kind of like games of its type of that era, you built your city and it just stayed in one tile. And uh, you could click on the individual single city tile uh, to get information of like, you know, maybe what else was built in that city, like the buildings you built and all that kind of stuff, which you, you do still, you know, you do that still. We have this screen and that kind of tells you down here what everything is. Um, but originally for these kind of games, once you'd found your city on the square, you know, that was it. Um, it visually didn't change from that. And one of the nice things that came along here, and I think it was in default Civ 4 from the beginning, was you get the city spread as it gets bigger. And, yeah, and you start to actually see the wonders and the buildings that you built into when you zoom in. If you've built wonders, you can actually see them in the city city walls sometimes they fall outside because it's a little bit goofy sometimes depending on the terrain it's on because it's a really hard thing to program but anyway in the call to power 2 thing there was there was a mod that someone had developed to add that sort of city sprawl or something i think they called it to the base city so it gave everything a little bit more kind of natural organic feeling as time went on your city grew you could kind of see other buildings outside the city walls um and i and then Possibly the developers of, of Civ 4 were aware of all that modding effort going on with uh, Call to Power 2 and, and you know, added their version. I mean, much more professionally and better. But so this is, so what, you know, I have a sort of a personal history because, you know, the only time I really got involved in the gaming industry was, was around that modding thing in Civ 4. And particularly when I see how religion has evolved in Civ 4, this is very much um, uh, a design and concept that, that I was building and coming up with in the, the modding scene in uh, Call of Power 2, like decades, well, I don't know, not decades ago, but, you know, 10, 12, 15 years ago now, a while back. Um, so it's cool to see. And I really like the dynamic that uh, the Civ religions added to the game. You know, I, I I understand Sid was quite, you know, I believe he's a Christian, and he was a bit unsure about all that part of it. Uh, and I know default Civ 4 didn't ship with it, and it's something that came with the Beyond the Sword expansion, and that was particularly related to some of the people that worked on that who had been working on the, the Civ 2 uh, modding stuff previously. Um, but for me, like you can't tell a story of history and civilization without including the role that religion has played in that whole process. Um, and, you know, the reason why the flavor for mods like Fall From Heaven 2 is so strong and so good is because of, you know, they've converted that our real world religious system that beyond the sword expansion added to Civ 4 and, you know, we've got all this high fantasy, crazy stuff going on here and it's very flavoursome and adds a big dynamic, you know, and, and, and it's principally behind why you can have the Armageddon counter mechanic and there's these extremes of, like, good versus evil, all that kind of concepts that kind of come into kind of religion and, and that kind of cultural impact on how societies develop. Yeah, you can't... It was the thing that, for me, you know, I was a student of, uh, of religion uh, in the past, and like for me, that was the thing that was always lacking in Civ games. Like right up until we started doing the, the modern work in Call of Power 2, and developed a religious system, um, and then that, you know, organically grew and developed into what I saw in uh, Civ 4 Beyond the Sword expansion. Um, you know, you just can't tell that that story of history without having the role religions have played on the development of mankind and all our societies it's just you know it's it's an intrinsic part of what civilizations are so anyway so i think we're good 12 turns we might get to the end in this one i'm, I'm thinking it's possible and now i usually run about what seven eight nine turns thing but 
There isn't a lot for us to do right now. We're just trying to get our ships back. Um, and we're just going to sit tight and, and knock through to the, the Ultra of the Moon into final. And that'll be season one. From heaven to down. I've got another a game series. Uh, I think I've got five episodes so far done. That'll be coming up next. Uh, you know, on the channel, there's... There we go. Yeah, I mean, I was sort of hoping they would take that bait. Yeah, the main flotilla. So, yeah, I knew they would die, but I knew at least that one. Oh, wow. Okay, good. He's really... He's really I mean, the, the retreat thing again, of course, again. That spread things out a bit. So that's okay. That's kind of what I wanted. I pulled them off just to kind of draw the attack away, or at least split the attack, but they, they decided to finish off what was the weakest, you know, which is great. I don't know if I'll have a move attached to them, but I've got reinforcements coming, so... I mean, fair use to Mahala, yeah? She's constantly tried <laughs> to do open borders negotiation with me. But I can't let her do it because she will just destroy all my beautiful ancient monuments. So, you know, I don't have anything to kind of fear from her particularly. So where are we going to go? Okay, that'll do. Um, now it's kind of weird, yeah. I don't know why. It seems like... Bloom. Do I have to better soil? No, no, I don't think so. So it seems like Uvain has lost his ability to plant trees. I wonder if it's related to maybe there's too many already growing, there's a limit to how many he can have on the go. I'm not sure. Not sure. But so what I'll do is I'll just skip his turn for now, see if that makes a difference. Yeah, this guy. So they are our new enemies. Still not utilizing gunpowder, so he can, he can sleep. Uh, oh no, sleep. sleep. So yeah. Um, let's go down and just check because I don't want any of my ships to miss. Yeah, no, here we go. Are there any that can move? Oh no, these are reinforcements. Oh. I mean, yeah. So what have we got? It's uh, it's two frigates, quite strong ones, and then some queen on the lines. How big a navy Ferry of Vicania has. And poor Anon Logos, yeah? He's just been a puppet. A puppet for evil since right near the beginning. And it's been a hard existence for, for their people. But quite an interesting, I've never actually seen that dynamic play out before, so that was quite interesting. Because he, you know, he he could take part of um, uh, the council, whatever it is for members of. Um, you know, because he was a good civilization, he actually is part of it, but he obviously didn't vote always for the interest of Hale Bacconi. So it was quite fun to see that. Okay, now then. How far can we go? One. Again. Yeah. 
crime flotilla. Yeah, see, look, yeah, it's not lighting up, so we can't actually create any more forests. So in that case, I think I'm going to put in, if we look up, who is the closest city? I mean, obviously the capital's tied up with doing Ultra of the Lunita, 10 turns. He's almost such a, he can churn out units. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to bring him maybe bring him over here. Ah yeah, this is what we want. So these are frigates. I should have probably flew him over this way just to to see there because like it's not too interesting she isn't going to be doing anything with armies and stuff uh, I'm pretty sure all her attacks are going to come by the sea um, yeah so the reason I'm I'm going to bring him around to the holy city for preparation and I'll probably put him in one of the forests down here maybe the ones that aren't being worked maybe there and he can just protect this sector um, so I don't have a lot of units in the cultural capital and that is one of the places where if Faconia wanted to land and do something she might and then the other one of these southern cities and, and this one is obviously one of our production military cities so I can switch that off research and churn out some units to to reinforce things if need be. Um, so let's go next turn. <clears throat> yeah, definitely should be possible to hit our Ultra of the Moon to final. And, and it's the one reason, like I said at the beginning, when we set this whole game up, <clears throat> I keep it there just as an emergency because, you know, looking at... Um, how powerful Oscar Balar was in terms of how she could deal with our powerful armies. Um, sort of this stage of the game, it's quite hard for any one faction to be that far ahead that they can clearly steamroll everybody. You know, you might be able to, you might be able to pick some weak ones. Okay, good. Oh. So my long oh that is good. So even on in ship warfare, my longbows do a defensive strike. That's interesting. I mean that's historically accurate. <laughs> Whatever. Um, now you're damaged, so I just want my whole flotilla. You want to ship? Don't worry about it. Okay, then we're going to go one, two, three, and then. So they've done their workshop. Now I think that's probably all. Yeah, it's just those guys. That's all they had to do. I don't think there are any outstanding tiles to work. Pretty sure everything up here is all sorted as we wanted it to be. <coughs> so they probably earned a good rest. They've been working hard for a long time. So we're going to send them down to our holiday city. Face map dom. Like our lake. 
um, coastal historic archaeological ruins, vacation spot in the south, very luxurious with all the dyes and, and stuff around. So they're gonna they're just gonna head back and have a holiday. Yeah, there's a couple there. Kind of wounded, so these are the ones that we damaged before. They might be trying to heal up. Oh no, in fact they're the ones that were following us. And they are damaged. So we should be fine. Uh, let's go in turn. Decius, like, when you see, you know, they're both, um, they're both vassals of us, but the comparative power of Decius to Mahalo is quite interesting. I mean, it takes everything into account, but I guess Decius has just made lots of troops, like, more powerful troops. Um, but certainly, I don't think he has the territory. Banking across this Northern Ireland chain, I don't know about maybe. So let's go. together to head down. Uh, so let's get on. <clears throat> now I'm trying to remember, I think what we had the Armageddon counter, the maximum, it was up to 39.40. Maybe it was just in the kind of like low 30s now, I'm not sure. But yeah, that never really came into play. It's like absolutely once we took Hyborium out of the game, you know, that that changed that. I think if Hyborium had been on another island, um, you know, even if he'd been up north, maybe next to, to Decius, then I couldn't really get to him. Or well, not easily. Uh, they may have stuck around a bit longer and um, been boosting that Armageddon count. <coughs> so I don't did we did we even get one of the I think one of the units because as you reach certain points in the Albuquerque encounter you get the the apocalypse horsemen or whatever they are and I think we had one of them uh, yeah you can wait you can wait the other guy's coming I'll just What's have a scout up again okay they're going back I didn't leave anyone behind, did I? Okay, he's there. So we're gonna we're gonna put him here. Now maybe Maybe they got wind that <laughs> there's a lot of people that are there. God, there really is, isn't there? I think I sent all my ships. I was that worried. And it was before I'd um, seen the Blood of the Phoenix at play. So I guess it's fair enough to use that. Oh, it's a privateer. Oh, 
Oh, I've still got one go. Wow, okay, so he's on auto. I think he's on auto, then. Yeah. He's just a spy. He's still alive, it's quite amazing. Gets my spy. Oh no, he became. Oh, Ulven became a vassal. Yeah, a vassal of Gary Vassal. Hmm. Now then, let's have a. I should just check out my turns. I don't. I think this time. So we're a religious theocracy, so it makes sense. We do apprenticeship, foreign trade, and over council. That's okay, I'm happy with all that. And that would improve my financial situation. Which is sort of fine. <laughs> it's not too right. Okay, so where's the diplomacy? Oh, okay, so, interesting, so they're at war, okay, so the world sort of switched around, split up, and we're now fighting different wars. I'd like to get those turns done in the next 10 minutes, I think. I think that would be about right for me. Well, that would work okay for our recording and stuff. So, when we're looking at... Yeah, maybe 40 minutes overall for this session. Um, so, six turns, so it's definitely doable. Yeah, there isn't much more for me to do other than do end turn, um, so we'll get to it. We just have to kind of suffer through um, the AI's unit shuffling. I mean, really, seriously, Siv, why you didn't look at the Call to Power series and create a proper army stack system? You know, one type of unit isn't the answer to the problem, you know, of uh, stacks of doom. You just need to limit how big those stacks can get. And Cool Power 2 had that system perfectly like decades ago. So I'll put him on watch. So we sort of we've become a sort of a military sea power in the interim. Quiet down here. Um, so three, yeah, so we'll take these three ships, so I'll do groups of three, and we're just going to, we're going to protect our borders a bit, so they're going to go there. Uh-huh, and then we're going to turn. Heck, there's a game like ages ago I remember really loving playing on the Amiga called um, Vikings Field of Conquest um, by a German strategy company. Um, you know, and you played on the map of uh, the UK, and it was an historic thing, and it was like that period in time when sort of the Vikings were raiding, and uh, you sort of took control of like a faction. Um, and it had a really nice system where you, you raised you know, armies kind of flocked to a banner, so you had a banner that was an army and you could put certain units in that army. Uh, but at least it recognised the actual status of an army, whereas in Civ all the way through, it's always handled like the units on a very individual basis. 
sure you could shift them around and move them around and in your mind create an army but there wasn't actually a mechanism in the game where the game could say okay yes that is an army um, and, and Call to Power 2 did it really well like perfectly you know I think you were limited to 11 or 12 uh, units per army that you created Eyes undead. situation where you would have you know you'd have a group of units and they would have they would be under an army so they would move as one um, and all that happened is when the you know you met another army and went into combat with them and you actually had another screen pop up and you had a it had quite a nice system you had like a front unit who were the melee units you had a secondary unit which were the ranged and then depending if you had them you know horses or tanks they would fit on the flanks and act flanking so the front units would duke it out in with the opposing army's front unit if a, if that front unit broke through and got to the secondary range units they would have an advantage being melee units engaging a range unit in melee combat so it was kind of important to kind of protect your range units to ensure that your front line was as strong as possible and then obviously the melee units behind were like firing over the top um, and like wearing down the opposition army overall and if you had flanks they would simply attack the sides of the army and as that weakened they would just push through so it was it was okay I mean it was for, for a Civ game it was about or Civ type game it was as complicated as you want to get um, but certainly it dealt with stacks of doom <clears throat> and it didn't mean you needed to spam the whole tile system of Civ with units which just like bogs the AI and movement down um, a good system five turns left four <coughs> so it's been an interesting little journey to uh, to build this up I hope I'm going to be able to. I hope I have time. <laughs> I'm going to not. I won't talk. I'm not going to get distracted and talk about historic Civ stuff um, for these last few turns. We're just going to get on with business. Um, although, while we're waiting for a turn to finish, I suppose I'm not too bothered about what's going to happen with my ships. I can't remember how many frigates I stacked up in our port city. Or City of Thieves, as I like to call it. So he can just stay there. Uh, I don't know. I mean, all this isn't important. Money, so maybe I've built a few too many ships. Hmm, it's possible. I mean, we've still got a big chunk of cash, so. Concerned. Mm, should I bring our ranger home? I mean, I could utilise one of the f one of our good frigates. Maybe because, like, yeah, and actually, we've got a shadow down there as well, so I think I've got. 
put space for two. So we might go and do a little uh, extraction rescue mission. I mean... Uh, yes, see what happens, I don't know what that means. Cancel these. Yes. Okay. And turn. Two turns. So I hope we win. <laughs> I hope there isn't something else that's going to surprise me at the last moment. You know, we're not overall, you know, the most powerful militarily. And I've also got to be aware of the amount of time. So we'll get through these really quick. Probably I'm not going to go through and analyse the, the end game scenario. We'll look at the graph very quickly. Um, but I also need to keep an eye on that time. That's my cat. Oh, he can still be useful. I was thinking of flying him back to the city already, but that's okay. I want to so they can wait. Next turn, those three move. And turn. One turn left. Make it. So overall, I would say, you know, that's my cat. Overall, I'd say I I had some fun playing this. I, you know, I, for me, it's if I want to play a sort of a, a turn-based sort of civ fantasy game, uh, then Fall from Heaven Two is still the best. And, uh, you know, there hasn't been one done better. You know, there's other good ones out there, but for me, this kind of like just hits it. Like, you know, it's not completely finished the overall mod, um, but what here, what is here, it's definitely one of the best uh, games of uh, of Civ you, you could play still to this day. Um, and for me, you know, Civ 4 uh, with the Bond Beyond the Sword expansion pack, you know, Civ 4 complete, I guess it's called now. It's the best Civ game that was made, ultimately, um, and I don't think there'll be better ones. You know, I think it's just the way games are designed and developed these days. They're moving in different directions. Oh, well, he doesn't have anybody. No, he can't help me. Okay, well, that's interesting. Yeah, so you can keep going. I think we'll go here. Turn. So now is it this turn or next turn? So let's see what happens. Bing! That's us. The golden age has begun. There 
was a big clunk. To see if I find something important. And now I hope it doesn't crash. I'm, I'm, you know, yeah. you know, we we had a good time. We built a nice kind of positive society for our people. Um, we made sure it was kind of like very healthy, very natural, focused on trees. I mean, we were actually in a desert region where we started out. And I think we've done a good job of terraforming it in, in the spirit of um, the loose religion. And, uh... <laughs> so that's it. A bit of text line. So savor that victory. Um, so that's it. That's the get out of jail card that, that I always have in the games just to stop them going on too long. Very nice, so thank you. A little round of applause for Fall From Heaven 2 and all the guys that made that mod. Um, Carl and, and everybody involved, because there's so many people involved in that. Yeah, uh, here we go. I guess this is the altar of the Lunar as we ascend to greatness, possibly we're going to end up helping Bassium in keeping the balance between good and evil. And the, I think one of the guys that did all these kind of still little animation things um, for the mod, he also was involved in some of the modding on Call to Power 2 back in the day. So that's it. Thank you very much, Civ4. Thank you very much, Fall to Power 2. And thank you very much, guys. Um, let's just quickly run through. Uh, no, exit. Okay, here we go. So where are we? So our score overall. Like, we were pretty much near the top overall. Um, when we look at the power, we will see we were like... You know, we weren't the most powerful. Uh, culture will be strong, yeah, as expected. I, I like that cultural stuff. Um, and we won't be... Oh, we are the richest, okay. Yeah, fine. Good stuff. Thank you, Siv. And I will end it there, guys. So, thanks very much. Take care, stay safe out there. There'll be a new series to take over from Siv. Um, and hopefully I'll get time to upload those in the process because you know like um, I wrote down on our my plan schedule like we're planning to move country and house um, so the next couple of months is going to be a bit kind of like quiet on our front for the channel and stuff um, so I will get back to it at some point there's a lot of contact here if you like Fallout 3 for example um, so enjoy and there's a couple more things to upload before I go quiet I'll do a probably a last video before that process so take care stay safe out there see you around bye bye